Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Scott Walters of HP, and we're going to talk about social intelligence. But let's start out by defining what we mean when we say social intelligence in this context. Right. So social intelligence, the social web, has fundamentally changed consumer behavior and the way consumers interact with companies and their expectations of how companies will interact with them. So what companies are trying to do is drive a level of interaction and engagement with their consumers using social platforms where consumers are already active. The intelligence part is the key part. It's by getting those engagements and interactions going that you can derive insight into customers' attitude, sentiment, intent, and behavior. So really this is about deepening the understanding of customers so that you can drive more relevant engagement with them. And so what kind of business use cases would you find for this kind of data? Well, clearly the, uh, the most prevalent ones that are most common these days are marketing oriented. So brand management, understanding brand positioning and sentiment versus your competitors is a popular one in consumer products companies. Certainly customer experience optimization and driving uh, better cross-sell, upsell offers based on deeper insight into customers' attitudes and behavior. Uh, but the more interesting ones that, that a lot of people are starting to explore are around product innovation and resource empowerment. So product innovation, we did a really interesting customer with a uh, large automotive manufacturer where they were seeking uh, a more leading indicator alert into potential quality issues with their cars. So certainly the normal process would drive uh, the warranty claims process would drive understanding after the fact. But by monitoring social interactions and blogs of consumers, understanding if they're having problems with braking systems or transmissions, correlating that with internal data from technicians in dealerships and what they're finding in repair orders, and then adding on top of that the actual warranty claims gives them a much deeper insight much earlier in the process that can drive uh, quality improvements can drive changes to the actual engineering of future products. So this is going way beyond where we've seen people just uh, download a bunch of tweets and tell you what people are thinking about. Yeah, these are, I mean, to me these are hard, you know, hardcore processes in real, you know, real serious industries, right? So certainly that's not to dismiss the marketing uh, buzz elements of social and branding and advertising and all the kind of things that it's very insightful for. But these are real hard hitting ROI cases driving core processes in big companies. Are we seeing people that are, are finding cost savings from things like the auto uh, example that you gave? Well, yes, yeah, certainly on both the marketing and, say, the product development uh, side of the equation. So on the marketing side, you're going to see a, a lot of shift of marketing spend allocation from mass sort of advertising type of things to much more uh, direct to consumer. So uh, influencer marketing is a very popular activity right now. So the multiplier effect of identifying who the most influential consumers are in your particular uh, brand or product category and engaging them in a relevant way and incenting them to become an advocate for your brand and your products throughout their network. There's been some very interesting studies showing big, big multiplier effect in terms of reach and actual influence by marketing to those influential consumers without the usual mass spend required to reach everybody.